is in favour, aye. Thank you. And next we have the Experience Mid Canterbury, Canterbury Annual Report from 2020. I'll move. move up, Councillor Cameron. Seconder, Councillor Lovett. All those in favour say aye. Thanks, no. Thank you. Um, and we have the Road Safety Coordinating Committee minutes. So someone would like to move they that we receive those. Councillor Hooper. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor. I love it. Does it need to be someone who was at the meeting? Oh, well, I don't think he invited there. Ah, okay, so that will, Councillor Lovett can no, second that. Them. Yep, receiving them. Um, all those in favour, aye. Against, no, carried. Thank you very much. Um, right, we have our first report, which is item number seven, and welcome Ian Soper and Neil McCann up. Um, so that's on the Rakai Gorge Campground Toilet Renewal and Matariki Observation Deck Development. Um, got your report here. Is there anything that you would like to add, Ian? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, look, I, I think the report clearly outlines the, the parameters of um, our original funding request to the Tourism Infrastructure Fund and then subsequently what they um, what they have downscaled that to. So the offer before us is, I think, clearly explained and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Any questions for Ian? Councillor Todd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to it might be being facetious, but um, I'd, I'd try to get the comparison between upgrading a toilet and having an observation deck for basically saying as a where's the compatibility and why is it necessary? Uh, thank you. Th through the Chair, the, um, that particular round of um, tourism infrastructure funding had a direction from the Minister that there was a preference to applications that had um, a level of um, focus on Matariki and that happened early last year before the first Matariki holiday came up within New Zealand, so it was a, a linkage that the Minister had wanted to create. So we conformed um, with an option that um, fitted the bill. Councillor Ellis. Thank you. Um, the new storage unit, is that for water, is it? Is that why we no longer need to rely on the Selwyn supply, or how are we getting water if not? Uh, through the Chair, it's going to be a dry vault system, so we won't be relying on water for this facility. The, uh, the storage element is for the, there's currently a, um, a shipping container on site where um, all manner of maintenance equipment for the site is stored, which is um, a wee bit agricultural for what the site is in essence. So it's to tidy that up in a, in a tidy way with the, the extended toilet block. So no hand washing facilities? Uh, that is correct, no hand washing facilities. So the campground will still need water though? I assume that will come from that Selwyn supply. Uh, through the chair, that would be a question for the property manager and, and the property side of it. We just deal with the public convenience side, and we are able to to not have water and just have um, the dry hand washing foams. Oh, okay, I see. Any other questions? Um, I've just got one. So this. Um, I presume is due to be constructed constructed within this financial year. Is that likely to happen, or is it going to roll over to next next year? Uh, through the chair, the the sticking point is the supply of the convenience facility because it's a prefabricated unit, um, and those units we have got a, a spot held in the production line, but it is a production line in Gisborne, so. There is some delays there at this point in time. Um, they have been put back a little bit, but uh, they haven't had a, a catastrophic failure in terms of their processing and, and build facility. And um, in talking with the, um, um, the construction folk there, they 
they still hope to have us on track for later this year. Uh, so in terms of your question, it won't make the 30th of July deadline would be our expectation at this point. Thank you. Any further questions? No, we have the recommendation there. Would someone like to move that? Councillor Cameron. And seconder, Councillor Ellis. Uh, any debate? Councillor Lovett. I'm just going to say it, it, it's going to be a good setup. It's going to kind of with what's been developed on the other side of the road with all the tourists going through there. I think this is going to kind of go well with that. And yeah, and I think it's a good project. Yeah. Any other speakers for or against? Um, I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you both. Uh, next, we are on. I just get my pages. We are on page 20 and the crossroads intersections coroner's report. So we've got Mark and Neil, and we've received the report. Um, any questions or anything you'd like to add, Mark or Neil? No, we'll just take questions, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Lovett. I was just reading all the road intersections you had on that, but I didn't see Boundary Road, Ford's Road intersection where we've sort of put the, the road stop in there. And what, along with that, um, there is a meterage stated for trees. Is there a meterage back from corners like flash, flax bushes and, and shrubbery as well that because I noticed that corner has got flax bushes planted and they're getting up and it's going to be kind of visually impacting that corner again. Yep. What, the intersections that have been um, reviewed or inspected uh, are a selection across the district, so it's not all intersections, it's similar crossroad intersections too. But so uh, there will be some that haven't been done, but the, on it, we've done an ongoing basis. In terms of vegetation, um, there's no set, it should be back to the boundary. There shouldn't be anything encroaching in the road reserve. So um, anything that's encroaching that's causing visibility issues, we can request that to be cut back or we can cut it back ourselves. So that's pretty normal. You need to have that visibility is a big thing. So, yeah. But again, having, having vegetation at right to the intersection is necessarily a bad thing. And the visibility is different between a stop and a give way. Um, so the better visibility you have, the more likely you have to give way. But, um, the more people can see in advance, drivers, um, we generally, we're more likely to stop when we have to actually have a good look rather than actually being able to see in advance. So um, having vegetation right at intersection is okay, but not within the road reserve. Yeah, just that one's got a slight t um, bend in it. And and when I saw the flax bushes being planted, I was kind of thinking this is going to be a problem down the line because it's a very busy intersection with Long Beach School people coming from Lake Hood across and then everyone going up and down Fords Road. I thought it's just one we kind of need to watch in the future. Thank you. Sure that's noted. Um, Councillor Wilson. Uh, yes, I'm referring to the um, Central Islands being put in quite a few um, intersections. Is the Because there's a lot of smaller rural roads coming into main roads, uh, the, is the truck access being taken into account? You know, because many milk tankers and big trucks are using these roads in the corners and will it make them difficult or in, you know, actually a worse situation than a better situation? And they won't, they'll be designed in um, islands uh, place so that trucks can still turn out, truck and trailers, can, it's normally a B train is what you allow for turning in and out, so um, it's often a uh, question when you put an island in um, quadrant curbs and on insects, oh you're narrowing it down, in reality we're actually widening them, um, so you need a five metre traffic lane when you've got an island and the island's set back far enough from the um, main road, so 12 metres to the front of the island, so they've got that turning circle going around. Um, done a few of these over the years and um, I pretty much know now what you need to actually allow them to go through without the islands continually getting hit. So you need to lay enough room, but you need that. But having the island in the middle of the road is a great thing for approaching vehicles with a sign in the middle of the road to actually see the intersection there. It breaks down that uh, tunnel view going right through the intersection. So they're a good, good way of making the intersection more obvious. But you still have to allow heavy vehicles, in particular on rural roads, to actually turn around them. Yeah. 
Councillor Cameron. Uh, just a quick question through the chair. Once the, the, your changes have been implemented, is that reviewed by the coroner's office or by Waka Kotahi so that you get a good sign off? For... It won't be by the, the coroner, but um, and not specifically by Waka Kotahi, uh, uh, except when they do their um, their audits around a four year cycle. So they will be checking projects that have been done and work they've done and the network generally when we have a drive around and show them those sorts of things. So that they won't be checking the end of in sessions involved with this, but they'll check the, the network generally to see what you've been doing and uh, whether they think they're effective or not in checking that way. So yeah. it's a technical audit that's done. So because it's about it, a four yearly cycle. The, so. the coroner's report suggested a review of those intersections was undertaken. So you've done that and implemented changes as per the report. Yes. So then they just, if you say you've done it, they accept that because we wouldn't want another review um, and you know, and they don't know that information that those changes have been undertaken because that could reflect badly on the council, presumably. I'll yeah. just pass over to Hamish. As yeah. far as I'm aware, the coroner doesn't do any follow up from their report. Okay. So the coroner investigates uh, the accident that caused, uh, yeah. that resulted in a fatality. They make their recommendations, but they don't then follow up to see what we did or they don't write another report. No. Or they're not an investigative office other than okay. the event that they investigate. Okay. So then these changes and what, what's been undertaken go onto some sort of central database so they can be checked or looked at or reviewed or or just on our own database? Well, we, we are the road controlling authority sure. for the Ashburton district. So, okay. so we are the ones who receive the coroner's report, yeah. weigh up the advice. Uh, in this case, we've done the review. Yeah. We're taking the action that we think is appropriate. Uh, and that's for us to do. Okay, yeah. sure. Neil, did you want to yeah, add a comment? Yeah, I'd like to add. Um, our staff typically audit the intersections and make sure that they comply with the standards, the required standards for intersections. And generally, our intersections do. And uh, we regularly check that, and that's what Waka Katai would audit. Um, what we've identified here is probably additional measures that um, arose from the the concerns over the, the tragic ac accident. So um, these are additional um, sort of st uh, actions that we can undertake. Any other questions? If not, Councillor Ellis, would you like to? Uh, I'd like to move the recommendation. Um, this was a tragic event that um, instigated this, but I have full confidence in our staff that um, they will be doing all that is possible to um, make our intersection safe. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Todd? Um, I'll second that, um, Madam Chair. Um, but um, I agree with what we are going to achieve, but really it comes back to uh, we can't factor in uh, you know, driver and attention and fatigue that uh, is outside of our control, unfortunately. But that's unfortunately the way, the way it rolls. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Wilson. I speak for it. Um, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think we, the, the government of the day has to understand that through Wakatahi they need to continue to help fund these in the entire amount of 51% at the moment. They can't back out of these safety improvements because their roading budget's already under immense pressure, so we can't afford just to keep funding everything. Thank you. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no carried. Thank you very much, um, and we'll keep you there because you have um, another report on um, item number nine, better off funding, new footpath sites, and um, Councillor Wilson has declared a conflict of interest with these. Um, we've read the report. We've got a good list of um, footpaths there. Any questions for either Neil or Mark? <coughs> I do have one. Um, Wakanui, oh, the Trevor's Road yeah. one, is that outside the subdivision area? That was a question from the, the Mayor. Yeah, it's, it's the next block across. Oh, okay. Elbert Street to Wakanui Road, yeah. 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 Um, and the other question he had was... Um, Allen's Road outside the Chinese village, is this expected to be done at some stage? 
Yeah, on the list of works there, um, Allen's Road is included in next financial year, but not in the better off funding. Um, so, but it, it needs more than just the footpaths, it needs the curb and channel as well. So yep. on Allen's Road, we've included the footbridge over the Mill Creek as pa part of the better off funding to provide that connection that's already there. The footpath comes either side and then you have to go on the road to around the coal to get around it. So uh, that's been included in there. But along Allen's Road, uh, so there's more than just the footpath. We've got the footpath included in our Ford program. But um, it does need more than just that. There's quite a bit of stormwater and other curb and channel and seal widening that needs to be done there. So um, we'll be doing a survey of that and sort of getting a full scope of what the work's required. Footpaths are one part of it, and how we fund the rest of it, we'll have to come back to you. Thank you. Councillor Lovett. Just asking about the Christian school. That school's built beyond the town boundary. Do they contribute towards that footpath, or are we doing it all, all ourselves? Uh, they're not contributing, no. They're not contributing. Yeah. This is, this is um, remember, the council sought and has had approved $900,000 from the mm. Better Off funding as part of the Three Waters reform, yeah. and this proposal is to spend that 900 on these footpaths. So this, this doesn't involve a contribution from rates, from Wakakatahi, from the landowners, from anyone else. This is the Better Off funding allocation. Yeah, it was just when we had the conversation last year um, we talked about that being out of the boundary and where... Yeah. Uh, you see, Madam Chair, the, the better off funding, it was not boundary specific, it was um, granted to the Council. Yeah. Thank you. And just another question on the long-term capital footpath. So that, that, because I did notice there's no footpaths um, in the better off funding for Rakaia or Hines, but they come up in the long-term projects. So I'm guessing that's over the next sort of three years, or is how do you how do you work out that um, programming? Um, it's worked out. Uh, it's what's seen as the most need, but also not doing all the work just in one place. Um, we could spend all the nine hundred thousand dollars in Rakaia. Um, and, and just require it with the, the works there. So it's programmed, we'll give about nine years of work um, programmed though. Th these ones aren't separate from um, that Ford work program. We've just added another one there for the better off funding in 23-24. Uh, so it's going to be done yeah, this year. I think funding needs to be claimed from them, uh, finished before December this year is what the work program is. So it'll be incorporated in existing contracts. So uh, th th these aren't projects that are, are separate to the ones we're already proposing to do, we're just able to bring these ones forward and do them sooner than we would have, and then other ones after that bring them forward as well. So it's based on, on the need and providing a link um, and you know, spreading across the district, not doing all in one place and one type go. So that, that's pretty much how it's done. Um, but it can be any of those can be done at any time if there's a will to say we want this one done first. Yeah, it's, it's just the staff's judgment at the time. So. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Cameron. Uh, just a quick question. How much per kilometre or 100 metres does a footpath cost to build? Like how many footpaths are we getting done? How many meterages are we getting done for 900,000? That's a good question. <laughs> just trying to compare it to roads or, you know, or swimming pools or whatever, just wondering what we're... Yes. Um, this is about $90 a metre, I think, is what the cost is. But there are, there are links in there. So, for example, the, uh, the better off... Not a, yeah, not on the recommendation that I can see. Uh, it's on the, the, the schedule that's attached mm. to the Bureau of Funding. For yeah, example, yeah, Alfred yeah. Street's 482 metres long and it's $65,000 is the estimate So that's cost. a consistent price throughout the district or is it based yeah, on, it's on based condition on or, or do you just do it or you take dig it up and put it down again, is that how it's well, done? Well, these are new footpaths, so yeah. Um, yeah, new it's the cost of a new footpath. It doesn't vary too much. Uh, they can't wee bit, but they're generally about the same price. So, yeah. And you build your footpaths the same as they build them in Auckland, the same as they build them in Wellington? And... Well, I can't say we build them the same, uh, but they're, they're suitable for the location um, and depending on what you're building on. So most footpaths are constructed as footpaths and not for carrying vehicles, so they've got a 100 mil depth of base course on them. Uh, sometimes you have to do a bit more than that, uh, depending on what the existing grounds like, but generally the, the footpaths are constructed the same. Some are done in concrete. We do ours on using base course and asphalt. So, okay. Yeah. Um, may I make a comment? Yes. Uh, when you, for example, there's a new footpath on Harrison Street, which I think's been there for about five years, I'm anticipating. Um, when you go down Harrison Street, it's on quite a big slope, or ca camber, is that the word? And when you get to the driveways, there's a bit of a dip, you know, because people have to drive their cars out. And that's quite disruptive for people on... Um, 
scooters, electric scooters or whatever. And there's, I've had a lot of complaints or comments about that. So when you build these new footpaths, will they be following that same design? Or these are new ones, like are they different to those? Or? Well, new, typically on footpaths, um, you want a 2% crossfall on them. And that just makes them comfortable for people walking. Um, if they get steeper than that, uh, then they're just a bit more uncomfortable to walk on and driveways can be, keep it steeper again. Uh, when you're doing some, something and retrofitting them like on Harrison Street, that's an existing street and you've got an existing carriageway and an existing boundary that's there, sometimes you can't achieve that 2%. But for the new ones, the 2% crossfall is pretty standard. That's what the spec will say. Um, if there's some reason because of the lie of the ground, so it has to be a bit more than that, then that's fine, but it wouldn't do less than that either. So. But like the Harrison Street, it's because working to the existing boundary, existing road, you haven't got much choice. It's where those deep gutters are. They're already there, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the driveways where you drive out, mm. they're still quite down from the footpath. Is that just because of the existing sort of architecture that was there? Well, and it's because there's a cut down in the kerb. So the footpath, a line of the kerb, at driveways, the kerb's cut down, so the footpath has to follow yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Councillor Ellis. Thank you. And just remind me, um, our policy was we were doing our footpaths X wide and the, and the rest was in grass verge and the reason we did that was so we could get more kilometres of, of footpath done for the same money. Yeah, yeah one point five, five metres wide is the minimum width you have for a footpath. So. Mm. Yep. yep, thank you. Um, there's no further questions. You'd like to move that? I'm, I move and I'm more than happy with the Albert Street extension to the Christian School, the development that's going on now on that side of town, the safety of those kids getting to school and not having to walk on the road when the grass is wet. I'm, I think this one's been overdue. Thank you, Councillor Alice has moved. Councillor Cameron, you'd like to see? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Yep. Any speakers for or against? Um, I'll speak for the motion, and in particular, um, I know that the line road um, footpath will be very well received by the Methman Community Board because I think they have been, um, it's been tagged as, as something that they had wanted to see for, for quite a few years, so um, I'll be very happy with that. Any other speakers for or against? If not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Thank you both. Righto. Uh, next, we have item number 10, which is the future for local government submission. And have Richard and Tayaba. And you've got your um, draft report of the review into the future of local government. There, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I've tried to capture most of the feedback I got from the workshop we had and by talking to the staff across the organization. So I'm happy to answer any questions, nothing further to add. Thank you, any questions? Um, I just had one, and um, probably around the workshop that um, we attended um, at Selwyn, um, was it last month? And um, Hamish made um, some really good comments about interacting with central government and how we could sort of do that in the future and um, whether that could be captured in in the submission, um, Tony was at that workshop and I, it's unfortunate she's not here today, but just whether you could possibly go back and, and have a chat to her to see if that had been, any of those comments had been captured. Was it about uh, the, uh, is it about like civil emergency? Uh, so civil defence emergency, health, etc. I think that was... Um, a slight comment has been made about it, not a very detailed one. Uh, I'll have to find it. Thank uh, you. Uh, Hamish, can you remember... I can't that? remember exactly um, the specific comments that I made, but uh, if I can just check in with Richard and Tayaba um, when, this, when this submission is due. It's today. Ah, 
Oh, okay. Right. Page 61. Thank you. Yes, in the paragraph 18. 18. Which is on... Which is on our page 58. Page 58, yes. Oh, you see there is some... Yeah. And, and if my comment was reflecting on um, the... the contention that the relationship between local government and central government can always be better, mm -hmm. um, but that in times of crisis and emergency, it seems to be uh, where central government in particular uh, has the utmost respect for local government mm. and community response to those crises. So when you're in the thick of an emergency, whether that's civil defence or it was um, most recently perhaps COVID as well for us, uh, there seems to be a real appreciation by central government of the role that uh, uh, local communities play in assisting um, uh, re response to those events, but in peacetime when those crises don't exist, uh, there appears to be a, a stronger um, drive to centralise and to mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps have more control and activity from the centre rather than local. So I think the comments that I may have made there were reflecting that in, in emergencies um, the respect is greater than in peacetime. Mm -hmm. And I see that... Uh, yeah pointed to clause yeah. 18, which does seem to reflect yeah. that line of thinking. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Councillor Cameron? Um, just reading this report, um, I noted one of the points was that we support the reduction of a, a vote down to the age of 16. Who is, from what perspective, because I don't recall us agreeing to that, but from what perspective was that? We discussed it, but I don't think we put our hands up and said yes, we So, um, through you, Madam Chair, this is now for Council to discuss. All, all, all we do as staff is okay. prepare a draft submission. Okay. So you need to be happy as a Council that everything said in here is in fact Council's position. Mm -hmm. If it isn't... Um, the debate now well, should... I, I don't recall should, that there was council, but I'm... Well, you haven't made the decision educated. yet, is my point. You haven't yeah. made that decision. Yeah. There is no call on that yet. You've got a draft submission mm. uh, that has a recommendation in it. Um, if that's not what council wishes to have in the submission, then you simply change it now. Mm. Yep. And I think we did, during the workshop, we did discuss all of these items, and I think um, the... the Draft or the report was written based on on the sort of feel of the room. So I'm guessing that more of us. More I don't think we put our hands up. No, no, the, the, we the, may not no, have, but no. but I think it was an indication of of what we sure, were saying. Okay, sure. Um, so if you want to go, if there's anything that you want to change in this, then today's the only day we can do it. And through Madam Chair, I think initially we are asking questions and yep. then when something yep. gets moved, you'll have the debate and you'll test the will of Council via resolutions or amendments yep. or whatever so else the process might be. So at the moment, yep. we're just trying to respond to your yep. um, questions about the uh, thing and then you'll decide what should yep. be in it. Yep. Council Wilson. Um, I'm pleased we've, we've put down about the long-term funding of Council and the, the other options of, of funding us through... Um, different mechanisms rather than just rates on land. Um, that could include parts of GST or there's many other avenues and the councils should be fully funded to do the core activities. And also when it comes to wellbeing, we're being expected to do things in wellbeing space but are not being funded to do that, that wellbeing stuff, which we're quite happy to do, but we need funding for it. And probably I'd, I'd actually support 16-year-olds being able to vote. So I'll yep. pop that one in there. Yep. Yeah, we'll just take questions at the moment and then um, I'll ask for someone to to move. Any further questions? Councillor Cameron. Uh, there's a remark earlier on about um, involving, I can't find it where it is now, involving the community to participate in one decision. Um, uh, let me find that again. Do you know where, do you know where that is um, through the chair to the team at the end? Um, we should have more um, participation in democracy and um, discussion, and it was we should have one 
chapter two, number nine, is that? Chapter two, number nine, it could be. On page 54, was that it? A no, I'll have to find it no. again. Uh, chapter two, number nine. No. But I just, it was almost like a goal, you know, like a target, like a, a, a KRA. And I just wondered, do we want to put that in there? Like, we should... Uh, here we are. 14. Council believes the following can lead to greater civil participation. Councils can commit to adopt participatory and deliberative approaches for at least one issue. Well, surely we can do that for 10 issues. Why do we choose one issue? Hey, so, Mr. So, Mr. Through, Madam Chair, I think uh, what the policy team are telling you is that participatory and deliberative democracy is a very different approach and that uh, you may wish to... Um, commit to um, trialling it or working on it in a, in, a, in a defined way rather than saying now this is how we work and finding that actually your entire governance structure needs to change, the entire way in which we make decisions alters. Um, so sure. I think that's the, the we're, we're acknowledging the system uh, has merit, uh, but it is, it is a very different way of operating. And softly, so you might, want to, you might want to trial it okay. first. Okay, I just read that as a, a like a... Uh, a target rather than a a movement, you know, but that that's fine if that's what that's gonna Councillor Todd. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a um, couple of questions on page sixty. Uh, what's meant by a treaty based partnership at the council table? Plus um, regarding the treaty and capability based appointments, who will make those appointments? So the treaty-based partnership has not been very elaborated in the report, like what it would look like, but the idea is to have more and more uh, representation of Maoris in the table, and uh, uh, that that would actually play part in decision-making. So we have uh, taken a position that uh, at least uh, in the smaller councils like us, uh, we need to find other ways where we have smaller number of Maori population and how to achieve partnership with that. In the earlier paragraphs, we have also highlighted that in terms of involving Maoris, what we are doing at the moment, and uh, certainly there are other opportunities to do that which needs uh, to be explored. I suppose, um, Madam Chair, personally... Um, question. Quest question time at the moment, oh, so we'll, yep. we'll go cool. into debate soon. Uh, any other questions? No, I think we've had a good look through there. So we do have um, the recommendation that um, we approve the submission to the panel's draft report for the review into the future of local government. Is there anyone who would like to move that? Councillor Ellis, a seconder. Councillor Wilson. Debate. Councillor Cameron. I'm looking at the 16, um, page 58, 59, 19 and 20. Agree, adopt, a, adopt a single transferable vote. It's a vote to lower the eligible drinking, a, uh, drinking age, voting age, to 16. Um, provide for four-year electoral term, etc. Um, we have in there, we support the lowering of the voting age to 16, but it must be um, accompanied by civics education in secondary schools. Will that be, and I'm debating, I'm not questioning, although this does sound like a question, it's rhetorical. Will that be two points or will they be considered in conjunction? I worry that they'll say, yes, we're going to lower the vote to 16, but we're not necessarily going to give these kids any civic education. That, and I, 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 won't, right, no. <laughs> I have concerns about that. That's my point about that. that Oh, that point, really. We are in debate mode, so I, I don't know whether we can go to staff for any 
comment um, unless you think that well, it's going to be it's useful. That's, and my, that's my point I'm making. Yes, I wonder maybe could it could have been a question. Yeah. So, Richard, if you want to, we can make it a question and see if we can get an answer back. Richard, or Richard? All I was going to say is that the submission does not say that Council supports the lowering of the voting age to 16. It says the Council supports the consideration oh, okay. of lowering the voting age to 16, Thanks, which Richard. is a subtly but that. importantly different thing. Yeah. I misunderstood. Okay. I, I withdraw and retract. Yeah. And just further clarification without debating that issue, uh, the Future for Local Government Review is an independent panel. It, it's not a government reform. The independent panel is gathering views and will uh, make recommendations. If the government of, of whatever persuasion in the future decides that some of these or all of these recommendations should become the law of the land, they'll have to draft legislation, refer it to select committees, have consultation uh, before it will become a new law. So, so th this is a very different process to things like the Three Waters Reform, which is a government reform, RMA Reform, which is a government reform. This is an independent panel's review. What they recommend doesn't automatically or even necessarily uh, become law. Right. Mm. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to speak for this because I think the um, report has captured everything that we talked about in the workshop. Um, We've had a lot of Zoom calls. We've had um, previous term of council. We had a lot of workshops, and um, we also went to that presentation itself. And so I think this does capture everything we've talked about and um, very well. Um, Councillor Alice, have you write a reply? Um, thank you. I'd also like to speak in support. Um, I think there's been a lot of work going into this, and. I think it looks very good. The interesting thing will be at the other end to see what the final outcome is, if, if there ever is one. Um, the, one of the beauties I see of lowering the voting age to 16 around the whole country, there are youth councils. Some of them are struggling like ours, but if 16-year-olds could vote, it would actually give a lot of relevance to our to the youth councils because they could then have quite a strong um, impact. So, yeah, I fully support it. Thank you. Um, one last speaker, Councillor Lovett. Yes, I, I'll support this. I think it's a good step forward. We've been talking about it for a long time and it's just moving the process forward. But what I find, um, you know, that New Zealand's becoming a multicultural society. We address Maori and that, and, but we don't are not addressing the future needs going down the line with, with, our, with our new society we're creating in the country. Thank you. Um, any other speakers for or against? If not, I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, next we have new delegations and loco delegation system. Loco. Which means crazy in Spanish, so that's, I'm very confused. Um, <laughs> I know you're not. Um, and we welcome Fem Femke up um, with Richard. Um, and you're going to do a short presentation, is that correct? So we'll just wait for you to get that um, organised. Is that coming up on the screen? Yes, thank you. If if everyone's happy for me to do the presentation. Yes, now? that would be good. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so I'll start. <clears throat> you just might need to move your microphone over yes. near your um, near to you so we can all hear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you can pull the whole thing. There we go. Thank you. So currently our the council houses all of its delegations uh, in a delegation manual um, and that is actually the manual if you will go on to the council's website and um, well, let's see if this got it. under the governance documents you will find a word document 60 pages showing all the delegations that council has. So let's see. There we are. 
as you can see, it's a very long document. <laughs> if it's gone, it's not even loading at the moment. Um, and uh, it has been found quite um, unuser friendly if you want to look for certain delegations or if you want to look for certain roles to see what delegations they have. It's quite a complex uh, document to navigate through. So when Elgum um, contacted the council in 2019 that they were going to launch a system where the delegations could be uh, hosted, that's when uh, Ashburton District Council decided to join as one of the first councils and to move this all the information from the Word document to an online system that is designed for that purpose. And that system is called Local Delegations. And I can navigate you through that. This is what Local Delegations is. So it is basically a, a website, um, and a website where you can easily, and that's the, the main benefit, you can navigate easily through it. So you can go to visit all the individual acts, you can, for example, if you would want to know what our delegations are under the Door Control Act, you click on it. You see all the different sections with our delegations, with a full description which comes straight from the Act, and with the different delegations that are appointed within this section. And you can navigate through. Um, there is a direct link which will bring you to the latest version of the Act. And that's, again, another big benefit of this system, uh, where with the Word document, we have to manually update it whenever there is an update in the legislation. Elgum is actually, through the local delegations, giving us notices of updates in the legislation, and you don't have to manually pull that through. That's all being done uh, in the system. So another big benefit of the system is that you can actually search on different and, and get different reports. If you, for example, want to know um, a delegation that we have uh, per role, we could go to, um, oh, uh, um, for example, you want to know all the delegations of the Open Spaces Manager. You look for the you search for that specific role and you will find all the acts and, and bylaws and warrants. There we go. And automatically brings you to where um, that specific role is mentioned. So when there's new staff starting at the council and you want to tell them, listen, these are your delegations, these are the uh, delegations that you have, you can just very easily make a report. This is the public facing uh, part of the website. There's even one where as council staff you can log in and actually make reports and uh, have Excel uh, reports out of the system. So that makes it even more easy. But for a public and, and general public and anyone who wants to see what the delegations of specific staff members are, you can very easily just search for it. Or you can search, for example, for a specific delegation. So let me just go back up. And got a good one somewhere let's see yeah power so if you for example want to know the power of entry where the delegation actually sits for the council and the different roles, you just look at it and again you come, it brings you automatically to where we have a de delegation on the power of entry and it's referring to the specific acts, the specific bylaw, the specific sections. So it's very easy to navigate um, and the system is extremely user friendly. So that's what the, the, and I can show you, I've been told that in the past there have been some more recent updates and previous on the financial delegations. If you would want to quickly go to the expenditure approval, you get to this overview where you can see all the different positions, the limit of expenditure that they have, and you can scroll through and the system shows you all the information at once. Um, yes, I think these are the, the main uh, 
quick insights in what the system offers. Um, there's a general introduction, there's a section with frequently asked questions where you can uh, refer to and um, the system will be, it's a matter of linking it and it will be available to, to the public and to anyone who wants to um, look into the delegations. Thank you. That was great. It looks um, looks very user friendly, which I think um, will appeal. Um, we might have the lights come back on if that's okay. And then any questions for Femke or Richard, uh, Councillor Todd. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm happy to support the uh, uh, this idea. Uh, what's the annual subscription? Um, if I'm correct, it's. It's about 500 a year okay. dollars, but I have to verify that, but Gordon will be able to supply that. No, it's a small, uh, yes. Any other questions? We've got two recommendations. Um, I just had a question on um, the delegations and um, wondering whether we've got the list of delegations there, whether there needs to be a workshop on on delegations, etc. Um, and if, if not, um, that's fine, that's all good, but if um, there was just a question about that. Um, Councillor Cameron. My question is really, uh, I think that would be a good idea. I'd like to refresh myself as to what delegations are in place. And, and there's presumably no new delegations in here that we don't, that haven't been in our existing delegations. Uh, th th through Madam Chair, um, there are some new, um, uh, partly around uh, law changes. Yeah partly around job titles. So when we restructure and we call Jane something else, um, then we have to reflect that change uh, in um, our, our, our documents. So there are certainly changes, um, but the bulk of them uh, as per the council has previously approved and is operating under. So it's made like the existing delegations manual, but easier to manipulate. Yeah, so I think what Fink is, is describing yeah. is, a, is a different way of structuring uh, the delegations, much more uh, internally user-friendly, hopefully will help some members of the public as well. But, it, but primarily in my mind, it's a very easy way for officers to um, be dealing with an issue and understand who has the authority to deal uh, with that issue and to what limits. Uh, but it should help members of the public and indeed council as well. Councillor Lovett. I was just going to be happy to move it, but I, I don't think we need a workshop because I think, you know, this is so simple. We can just go online and, and on this and have a look. I think it's a vast improvement for, for the public and, and for us as councillors going forward. It's modern, what has modernised us. So there's two sort of part, I suppose, yes. one and two of the recommendation that we receive the report um, and then that we adopt the delegations. I'm happy to move one and two. Happy to move one and two. Do I have a seconder for that? I'll second that. Second, yep. So uh, moved by Councillor Lovett, seconded by Councillor Hooper. Um, debate. Councillor Todd. I just question, Madam Chair, why aren't we ad adopting option three, which is to adopt all the proposed legislation? Option three. That's what we are adopting. Isn't oh, you it? said one and two. That's all. Oh, that's in the recommendations. So we have two. Madam Chair. We have two um, recommendations that the council receives the report, and then we adopt the council delegations, and then part of that. Second recommendation is the three um, options, um, and the option three is adopt all of the proposed delegations, which was the recommended option. So, I, I think that's what we are looking at. Councillor Cameron, debate. Yeah, yeah I'm in debate. Um, I think we need. We, I think the system seems to me a slam dunk, and it seems perfectly reasonable. So, I speak in support of adopting the system. 
but I do also speak in support of making us more aware. We've just had a civil defence workshop. All those things, we need to understand the delegations better, I think, for our role as councillors as well as to who's making these decisions and what the scope of those decisions are. So I would support a workshop in that area. I don't know whether that's a question or a comment, Madam Chair, but it's sort of, I think that's important. Just a comment. Um, I think probably what we would have to do is put the motion and then if anyone wanted to make an amendment, um, they could do that. So um, I'll put the motion for the, the two. Pardon? Oh, sorry. Got a right of reply? No, no, I'm, I'm happy with yeah. that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Cameron. Uh, just a question on, on process. Why would we make an amendment that we follow it up with a workshop? Is that your suggestion? That doesn't. We don't need to. No, I don't. No, I don't. I just think that would occur or not occur. I was just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Sorry. Right. We'll move on to financial reports. Thank you, Femke and Richard. And um, and we've got Erin coming up and we have got the variance report included in our agenda so I'll start on page 71 and we'll just go through page by page are you happy with that Erin? any questions please put your light on so 72, 73 74, 75. Neil McCann. <laughs> Just want to correct on, on page 75, the capital expenditure for footpaths, it, it is not a permanent variance. Um, that work will be completed, so it should, be, should have a no. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wilson, you have a question? Page 75, the, the cost of emergency works for the July heavy rains, currently 2.3 million, 2.39 million. Uh, we've had a request to walk to Hay. It's been sitting there a wee while. Just how are we getting on with our request to get the 50% the of it or 51% subsidised? We haven't received our response yet for that, from that request. OK, we'll keep moving. Um, page 76, 77, 78, 79... 80, 81, stormwater, 82, 83, stockwater. Councillor Cameron. Um, I just have a point on page 84, um, the capital expenditure on the fish screen business, and it hasn't, Becca hasn't managed to start yet um, for whatever reason. It's just regarding the forecast. I don't know if we can up... Is this how we update our forecast? But it would be good if we updated our budgets as we went along because people are looking at our budgets and we get feedback constantly about running behind on capital projects or, and people don't really understand accruals and, you know, carrying over funds. I think um, some sort of updating thing regularly would be quite useful, in my opinion. I mean, I know we get these, how often do we get these every three months? Once, no, once a month. Once a month, yeah. And we do that. But do, does the public see that we're not going to, the Beck has delayed that looking at the fish screen, so that will be delayed and the, and the money's carried forward? Um, like, three, Madam Chair, what we do is we bring this to council in open meeting. And that's a subject. So, yeah. so um, certainly the public has. So, the this is where we to... get back to our last conversation about participatory democratic process and that make people aware of things. I'm just thinking who's watching this on the open screen? I don't know, but the no. whole world can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, and our media friends can report yeah. any part of this meeting. So. I suppose, in a general comment, my feedback is we often get um, criticised for not meeting our major projects. But often the reason is outside our particular control. Um, it, I wonder if we could do a, I don't know, just a thought, do a list of what projects are delayed and what not through 
what do you, I mean, there is this, I understand. Is this put on our website, this report? Yes, the agenda's yeah. on the website. Yeah. This is an open meeting. Yeah, this it's is recorded. on the website and the agenda. Um, yeah. So it is all... It it, is it's all, all available yeah. for the public to yeah. know. No, it's so we could go, if we wanted to really be involved in participatory democratic process, we could go above and beyond to try and... Hide. Councillor Ellis. Thank you. Um, the fish screens, is there any risk here for council with this being delayed? Because I believe we are in breach already with these, are we? Or am I incorrect there? No, yeah, the, um, we are, um, but we are communicating with ECAN and explaining to them that we are undertaking the design of these fish screens, but at the same time we are looking at the future of our intakes and whether we'll require those intakes and uh, if we're going to close certain sections of our stockwater race network. So um, they do understand that we are doing that and they understand that we may not need fish screens in, in one or two of our intakes. So we are working closely with them and they are aware of our um, progress. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, the the um, increase in budget required to run the stockwater races does show the urgency we, we need to display in closing and moving forward with the overall annual plan is it the, to, to reduce the amount of stockwater races we have in the county because otherwise we're just the cost is going up and the, the service effectiveness is getting less. So we need to be push this, the red button to make it actually go a bit harder at it. Uh, if I can uh, just explain that, although we do close stockwater races, um, our costs are in cleaning and maintaining the mains. So we may be closing other stockwater races not that aren't mains. We very seldom close mains. So our costs aren't decreasing. Our maintenance costs, they are in fact increasing. Um, and uh, the, the stockwater races that we're closing are invariably the ones on, on properties where they are responsible for maintenance. Hamish, did you want to comment? I, I you see you, Madam Chair, and what we note the comment around the closure of stockwood races, but Council has a, an entire policy and protocol and process of doing that, uh, and we we continue to work uh, within uh, that process. And, and I think we've talked most recently about the example, you know, that currently um, went or just recently went to a hearing where there are very many, there are different views in the community about the urgency of closing stockwater races and uh, some um, uh, share your view and others uh, don't in particular instances. So we just have to work through all of that. It, it's not, uh, there's no magic wand to suddenly close them all. Um, uh, Councillor Wilson. Just one comment, perhaps, that the, the public and the the ratepayers have to understand that the closure is driven by the ratepayers and the, the users of the race, not by the council. So the, their costs are increasing, and if ratepayers wish them to reduce, they need to instigate the closure, which is perhaps what happened in another case, and we mm. work through the process. But I'm perhaps getting it. We can't shut them. They need to tell us to shut them. And I think there's perhaps a lack of understanding perhaps of that in the community. Thank you. Um, page 85, Waste Reduction and Recycling. 86, 87, 88, Economic Development, page 89, Councillor Cameron. Um, just a question with regards to forestry. Do we always have logs available for harvest? Like when you read it, like, like we pick and I thought they had to be harvested within a certain time. And what about with the... Um, when we had the big wind and the logs fell and then the price was good and then it dropped. So do we keep those in storage somewhere? What do we do with that? No. Hey, Mr. Um, Madam Chair, we have a forestry um, estate yeah. uh, and it has various ages. Yeah. So the young trees aren't due for um, harvesting and the, when they get yeah. to maturity, they are. Uh, and so we program the harvesting of the mature trees uh, within a broad time frame, but to suit the market. So if, if it if, if, let's say, we did a okay. harvest of a pine plantation that's 25 years old and that might be the theoretical time to harvest, if the log price is really low, we might wait for a year or two in the hope that the um, price improves and then, and then harvest. So okay. it's a balance between the growth and maturity of the trees yeah. and the harvest. And, the and then the further complicating yeah. factor is Mother Nature. So every now and then we'll get a Norwest which actually um, harvests them for us. If they're, if they're blown over and you have to tidy up the plantation because of the, um, the mess that the wind might have left, then you have to accept the log price uh, on the, at that time for whatever you can salvage out of that um, plantation. So we don't harvest and then store them somewhere waiting for the... Well, that's um, what, yeah, because we had that salvaged after the, that massive um, wind event. Yep. We, there was a lot of um, forestry fell down. Yep. 
And then I thought that they were not sold because the price dropped, but they obviously were sold on open market at that particular price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. I mean, you might be able to hold them for a little while, but you can't. You can't no, put them well, you run out for of years that's, on end waiting for the, yeah. the price to improve. So yeah. the, okay. the wind is a material factor on the Canterbury Plains, and every now and then you'll get a big wind, and people are harvesting or salvaging plantations. Uh, and it tends to be um, uh, not just mid Canterbury or the council's forests that blow over it in the same wind. You'll get a, a widespread mm. uh, lot of damage. And I remember that big wind in 2013, even though I wasn't involved in council. And I remember the um, firewood price fell quite dramatically over mm. the whole of Canterbury because every firewood merchant had access to um, oceans mm. of uh, very cheap trees. So uh, the wind is definitely a factor in the Canterbury Plains as well. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, page 90, 91, Parks and Open Spaces. 92, 93, Governance. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, the draft balance sheet, 99, net debt and borrowings, Councillor Cameron. Term deposits, we've got a Westpac one for 3 million and a Kiwi Bank one for 1 million at those particular stated interest rates, and the Westpac one was only for one month. Um, what is that? What where is that going to go now? That's expired as of yesterday. Um, through the chair, though, those term deposits are basically um, to put our make sure our money is making money when we're not I necessarily see. needing yeah, it straight away. That. So we get our maybe we get our rates in, and we need to put some away for to make interest on that, so it's not just sitting in the, the account. Um, so what will happen with that is it will go into the account into the main account for paying expenses relating to council. Okay, so you're timing your term deposit maturities based on your capital expenses or whatever. Yes. You're not using that to pay down your all, debt or anything. All expenses. is um, We have to make sure we've got the cash flow in place to be able to pay down debt, otherwise sure. we'll have to take more debt up to sure. cover that capital expenditure. Thank you, Hamish. Madam Chair, it's far more related to operating expenditure than capital expenditure, because capital expenditure tends to be funded by loans, so the yep. cash is funding your operating expenditure. Thank you. Um, Page 102, and then we've got the EA Network Centre uh, report there on page 103. Any questions on that? If not, someone to move that we receive both reports. I move. Councillor Todd. Seconder. Councillor Ellis. All those in favour? Aye. Against? No. Thank you. Um, we have the Mayor's report on page 104. Um, and we do have one recommendation there, um, which... Oh, so first of all, we'll receive the report. So I'll move that we receive the report. Councillor Cameron, you'll second. All those in favour, aye. Thank you. And Councillor Cameron, have you got a question uh, yes, or did I you have. want to move that recommendation? I've got, oh, got a question. I, I've got a question, but we'll I can attempt also, to answer. Uh, yeah, you may or may not be able to answer. The Waka Kotahi um, Rakaia Waybridge site visit. Yes. What was the outcome from that? Does anybody know? Were you at that meeting, Hamish? I, I was um, with a couple of councillors. One of the outcomes we got very wet. Uh, because we stood on the side of the road for an hour in the pouring rain arguing about the merits of the way station uh, and um, it was um, uh, meteorologically unpleasant to say the least. In terms of uh, however the actual uh, work, um, it, it was a useful forum I felt because there was representatives from Rakaia who were very concerned about the roadworks um, uh, outside the uh, bakery and the um, uh, motorbike shop. Motorbike shop. Yeah. Uh, so it was really good to see the Wakatahi representatives uh, having to listen to that uh, first hand. Uh, the Mayor was able to explain his concerns around the safety uh, very carefully, uh, as were the um, councillors who were there. Uh, we had um, two, uh, we had one MP and Nicola Grigg, 
uh, plus a candidate uh, for the um, elections later this year. So there was quite widespread um, support for the meeting. Uh, I think what Yutahi made it reasonably clear that they, um, they believe they have it right and that the reduction in the speed limit will uh, address the safety concerns that were being expressed to them, i.e. At, at 100 kilometres an hour, uh, they, might, they might agree uh, that trucks pulling out in that uh, narrow or that short stretch of road was unsafe, but at 60 kilometres an hour, um, they had mitigated the risk. So there was certainly no undertaking from Waka Katahi to um, uh, significantly review the decision, uh, and uh, it was useful in that the local voice was uh, expressed and uh, heard, uh, but we didn't get the impression that it was going to necessarily change anything. May I ask a supplementary question? Yes. So is there any additional activity planned in remonstrating with Waka Kotahi over that position? Like more placards or more visits? or? Uh, I'm not aware of any further no. action that okay. can be taken uh, or is being planned. Um, I've got no knowledge of that. No, and, and I think the Mayor um, said the same to me, that it's a done deal. they've met, uh, I, I think, and Councillor Lovett, Councillor Wilson were at that um, meeting, I wasn't, but um, also that um, they'd listened to the concerns of, of some of the businesses along that stretch as well, but Councillor Lovett. Yeah, one of the businesses, the bakery, was losing a lot of money because they've lost a lot of their customers and she voiced her opinion working 10 hour days with hardly any customers walking in the door. And I kind of, we, we did have the trucking industry there being represented, and we brought up the subject about the curbing along the side of the road by the actual the weights, and that's um, actually stopping the trucks and trailers and the cars pulling, caravans pulling up along the state highway there, because they all stopped there. In the trucking industry said, well, you know, the, the industry, the, the drivers need to, to have a break after 11 hours, and that's often where they parked up along there. So um, they did say they were going to have a look, whether they could create a, a pullover area somewhere along there for the long vehicles, which I think would be a good compromise if we could all work together and they pay for it and do it for us after the, what they've caused... Um, these businesses to go through. Um, if I can make yes. a comment, yes. yeah, Councillor yes. is correct. Uh, there was the the um, Wakatai representatives did want to understand uh, the northbound uh, way bridge impact on those two businesses a little better. So they were they did undertake to go and understand that better. The 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 point about However, the sighting of the southbound Weybridge, which was the Mayor's principal concern and reason for calling the meeting, uh, was, was where my uh, comments were targeted. But certainly the individual businesses that have been affected by the northbound and, and, um, and were present at that meeting, Wakukatahi did, uh, did undertake to try and understand that better, whether there's any ability to ameliorate um, those issues is still unknown. But, but Council Love is correct that, that that piece of the concern uh, wasn't completely resolved uh, on the day. Yep, yep, thank you. Any other questions on the Mayor's report? Councillor Hooper. Thank you. I'm not sure if we'll get a report, but just wondered how the Anima stock race um, focus group went. Yeah, I see that on there. That um, was a couple of days ago, so that was... Um, Neil, were you at that meeting? Yes, I was. Yes. Um, I think good progress is being made. Um, the various parties discussed the options going forward and it looks like there are some positive options um, to make progress with. So um, there will no doubt be another meeting, um, but I think it was a very positive meeting and um, that we're all working towards a satisfactory outcome. Yep. Nice. Just another question on that. Did everyone who made a submission or affected by that um, race closure attend the meeting? They were all invited. However, we did suggest that um, you know if, if a group wanted to have a representative or two, um, they were to send send one or two, and they did. So we had oh, that's good. good 
good representation from both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we do have that. Have you got a question, oh, Councillor Alice, move. or did you want to move um, the recommendation I'll move there? I'll the recommendation that Councillor Lane Brown be appointed to the Ashburton District Council representative on the Central Biodiversity Advisory Group. And Councillor Lovett will second that. That makes sense. Thank you. I don't think we need any debate on that. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no carried. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to... We've, we've received the Mayor's report. We did that first. Um, so that brings the open meeting to a close. Uh, would someone move that we go into public excluded? Councillor Hooper, Councillor Todd... All those in favour say aye. Thank you and thank you to the media.